Today we're gonna to be working on the Danish pastry dough. Uh, we're gonna fill it with apricot filling and a pastry cream, and it's gonna make a delectable Danish pinwheel. This pinwheel captivated my attention over 20 years ago at a bakery I used to work at. When I left there, I was on the hunt for this pinwheel, and I could not find it. I tried hunting down the recipe, I went to local bakeries, but no luck. Finally, one day my dad gave me this book and the recipe was in there. So I tested it out and it was indeed my long lost pinwheel. It has been, I have been making this pinwheel for about 12 years now and I am very happy to share this with you and how to make it for your home. This dough does take two days to make, so you really do need a plan accordingly. And I hope you love it just as much as I do. Thank you. All right, so we will be working with yeast today. And I will give you a few tips on how to make it really work for you. Also, because we're doing a pastry dough, we will be using cold, unsalted butter. So no room temperature butter today. And so here are the ingredients you're gonna need. So you need a quarter cup of warm water, and it needs to be 105 degrees to 115 degrees. And I make sure to warm up my measuring cup so that way when it doesn't cool down uh, your water. And I always aim for 110 degrees so when I put it in my bowl, it won't go below 105. So right now, I put it in my bowl and it's right at 105. A ruler. Now I use a French rolling pin, the one that does not have any handles. It really does make it easier to roll, especially if you're gonna come on this pastry dough journey with me. And these items will actually we'll use when we start rolling out the dough, so we don't need them just yet. All right, so we're gonna get started. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna pour the water into the large bowl, which I've done here, and I'm just rechecking the temperature to make sure that we are still good standing. All right, and then you're gonna sprinkle the yeast on top of the water, and you do not need to mix it in, so we're just gonna sprinkle this. So it's gonna begin to soften for a minute, once you can see the yeast starting to settle into the water, you will then add the milk, egg, sugar, and salt. And then you're gonna whisk it all together. So if you can kind of see, it's kind of softened, so it's, it's moist around the edges, and some of it's still not completely soaked in, but that's okay. But the same process of it starting to soften has started. So we're gonna go ahead and pour all that stuff in. Okay. So we're gonna go ahead and put this aside for now. And now you're gonna put your flour in your food processor. And you wanna make sure that you have the metal blade for that. So what you're gonna do now is you're gonna drop your butter pieces into the flour and then you're gonna pulse it about eight or 10 times. I like to sprinkle my butter around as evenly as I can to kind of help it have a consistent pulse. Now you don't wanna over pulse this. You wanna keep the butter in pieces no smaller than a half inch uh, in diameter. So I 
So now I have pulsed it for about eight times and I have like my pieces are nice and chunky. Okay, so now we're going to empty this into our yeast mixture. our spatula and very gently mix it all around and scraping down the sides as needed. So you're only mixing until the dry ingredients are moistened. You do not want to over mix. You're trying to keep the butter in those bigger pieces. And the butter is what makes this dough perfection. Butter pieces equal nice flaky dough. All right, so I scraped down my sides as needed and everything is moistened in there. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cover this with the plastic and I'm gonna refrigerate this dough overnight. So it can be up to four days in the refrigerator like this before you roll it out. So if you don't have time tomorrow to continue this on, that's okay. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and wrap it up and then we're gonna see you tomorrow. And then we'll start our rolling process. Hi everyone, welcome to day two of the pastry dough. So today we're gonna to be rolling and filling and baking. It's gonna take quite a lot of time to complete this, but it is totally worth it. So the first thing you can do is you're gonna need a nice cool surface to work with. You don't want the butter to melt. So it's important that we work fast and efficient when it comes to rolling out our pastry dough. And the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna lightly flour your surface, which I had done already. And we're gonna put our chilled dough um, on that and we're gonna pat it into a rough square. So one thing I wanted to show you was the dough has those nice big chunks of butter in it. So now we're just gonna go ahead and pat it into a square. So um, now that we have our square, we're going to be rolling it out into, it's going to be 16 inches on each side. So you're going to make a bigger square of 16 inches on each side. So that ruler that I saw you need will come in really handy. I also have a baking mat that has dimensions on it, which is super nice. So it kind of helps me. One thing I would highly recommend is having some flour, like a pile of flour off to the side, so you can keep sprinkling the flour on because it's a pretty sticky dough. Okay, so now that we have it out into a 16 inch square, we're now gonna fold it into thirds. So you're gonna fold it kind of like you're folding a letter in the mail. So you're gonna go down to one side. It's gonna stick, cause that butter, and hopefully you can see the nice globs of butter in there. That's exactly what you want. You don't want the butter to mix in with the dough. Sorry, my monkey is in the back playing. And then I like to take a pastry brush and just kind of wipe off the extra flour if there is any. All right, so I have my opening in the front and in the back. I don't want my butter to get warm. So if your butter feels warm to the touch, you're gonna take it and put it in the refrigerator. So one thing that you can do is have a baking sheet ready to go with some plastic on it. So that way you can put your, your dough on your sheet like so, and we can put it in the refrigerator for 15 minutes, okay? All right. Okay, so it's been about 10, 15 minutes later and my dough is nice and chilled. So now I'm going to roll this out again into a rectangle and it's you want it to be 10 inches by 24 inches. So go ahead and do that. And don't be afraid of the flour. Perfect. All right. 
Okay, so I'm now going to fold it again into thirds. Okay, so because that is, it didn't take very long, I'm gonna go ahead and roll it out again to now a 20 inch square. So all we're doing is folding layers into layers, just like you would with croissants, because you wanna get that nice flaky texture and rolling it out and layering it and rolling it and layering it is what gives you the nice texture of a, of a pastry dough or a croissant, because the croissant's gonna be the same thing. So now I'm gonna fold it into thirds again, and I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator. My dough, my butter is kind of warming up. I can kind of see it melting a little bit into my mat, and I don't want that butter to get cold. Or sorry, I don't want that butter to get warm. I wanna keep it cold. So I'm gonna probably go ahead and put it back in the refrigerator just for about 10 minutes and then we will continue on. All right, I'll see you in 10. Okay, so we're back. So guess what? We're gonna roll it out again to 10 inches by 24. Now, it sh this should go by fast. As you're getting used to doing this kind of dough and you can roll faster and faster and it becomes more easier, you don't have to do necessarily the chips to the refrigerator. The trips to the refrigerator are just to keep it from getting warm because you want to keep that butter cold. So um, just know the more practice you do, the less time it will take you to do all of this. Okay, so now we're gonna fold into thirds. So also the key is when you're rolling it, try to roll it from the center out. Center out, center out, center out. It helps to keep the, the dough nice and level. And now we're all done with rolling it and this dough is now actually ready to be used in any kind of recipe that you want. The only thing is you want to make sure to chill it for 30 minutes before you use it. So I'm gonna let this dough chill for 30 minutes. And in the meantime, we're gonna actually work on making the fillings for this particular dough. And then hopefully at the end, we'll bring it all together. So before we get into the fun part of rolling the dough out and getting it all set up as a pinwheel, we need to make the fillings first. So we're gonna be making an apricot filling and a pastry cream filling. Um, for the apricot filling, what you're gonna need is one cup of dried apricots. And I usually use just a six ounce bag of dried apricots. It weighs out, or measures out to one cup perfectly. So this is a perfect size bag for that. And then um, I have a tip for you later, it's for a towel. Okay, so the first thing that you wanna do is you wanna put the water and apricots and sugar all together. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna stir it all together. So we're gonna put this in the microwave for 10 minutes, but you're gonna stir every three minutes or so. And you want the apricots to look a little bit puffy and absorb some of the liquid and a little bit on the soft side.
so um, so if you notice it is taking some of my liquid and the liquid is a little bit more syrupy obviously not all the liquid went away so um, but if you see ooh, it's hot it's really hot so be careful but my apricot is a lot more plump and soft than it was before it now what you're gonna do is very carefully dump the apricots into your food processor. So we're gonna pulse this until it's smooth. Now it gets pretty messy for me, the juice comes out. So I like to wrap it, a towel around it, so if it does get messy, it goes into the towel and not on my container. Okay, so now it's nice and smooth. So now I'm going to transfer it back into the bowl. Alright, so now we're going to add the lemon juice and the um, almond extract. So now I'm going to put it in a small container and I'm going to let it cool to room temperature. And then I'm gonna start on my pastry cream. Okay, so now we're gonna make our pastry cream. So what you're going to need is you're gonna need one cup of half and half or heavy cream. I do prefer heavy cream. I've always found it's made a little bit more of a thicker pastry cream. So I, I prefer heavy cream, but half and half works just fine. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna actually mix the vanilla with the egg yolk. So the next thing you're gonna do is you're gonna whisk the half and half for heavy cream, the cornstarch and the sugar all together in your bowl or measuring cup. Okay, so once you do that, we're gonna microwave it for one minute. And then after that minute, you're gonna stir. All right. So now we're gonna continue this process of microwaving it for two to three minutes. Um, I usually set my microwave for three minutes and then I just check it every 30 or 40 seconds. Um, if I'm using heavy cream, I do notice it cooks a lot faster, so it's more on the two minute line. And then the heavy, if I use half and half, it's more closer to the three minute line. So you just wanna make sure that you're looking for the mixture to get to the boiling point, boiling point and it has thickened slightly. This is kind of the consistency that you're looking for. It's like a very runny pudding. And it it had kind of bubbled over, so that's what you're kind of looking for, is that nice runny pudding. Um, so now that you have the right consistency, you're gonna slowly add this into the bowl with the yolk. So what I'm usually aiming for is about one to two tablespoons of the cream into the yolk. You do not want to add too much because what you'll end up doing is scrambling your eggs and then it'll just destroy your pastry cream. So our goal is just to warm up the egg and without cooking it. All right, so you want it to be warm enough. All right, so I'll start off with a tablespoon and stir it together. And I'm adding just a little bit more in just to warm up the egg. It is a fine balance to get, and I have mixed that or missed that mark before. And if you have, you're just gonna have to start over and try again. 
So once you feel like you've gotten a good mixture and you feel like the egg is warm enough to add to the pastry cream without scrambling it, so it's got a nice kind of mustardy color to it, then you're gonna go ahead and pour it into your actual cream. And now we're gonna put it back in the microwave for just 30 more seconds. So now I have like a really, kind of really thick pudding and that's the kind of consistency that you want. So it's not so runny, it's like almost like a lemon curd or a thick pudding. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna scrape it into that smaller bowl. And you don't wanna form the skin on it, so we're gonna take that plastic wrap and we're gonna lay that plastic wrap right against that pastry cream. And now we're gonna let it cool or <laughs> cool down to room temperature, and then we're gonna chill it. All right, so the final moment where we get to put it all together. It's very exciting. Um, so what you're gonna need for this step is you're gonna need the flour, because we're gonna roll out the dough. I love using um, the sugar in the raw. I find it makes a really great decoration. And then spoons, which you're gonna use for the fillings. All right, ready to get started. So the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna take our dough and roll it out. Shocking. And we're gonna roll it out to a 20 inch square. Okay, so whew, I is now it is in a 20 inch square. So we're now going to mark along the sides every five inches. All right, so now we're going to use the pizza cutter and the ruler, and we're going to cut along those five inch marks, and we're going to end up with 16 five inch squares. So for each square, you're gonna roughly put about a tablespoon or a spoonful of, of apricot filling on each one. All right, so now what we're gonna do is either you're gonna use the same pastry or the pizza cutter, or you can use a small knife, and you're just going to cut the, from the middle to the corners, and you're gonna cut on all four sides. So from the, from the corner to the middle. Okay, so now that's all done. We're gonna take our um, egg whites and we're going to just brush just the corners of each, just basically just along the corners that you just cut. So you're gonna do all four sides.
Okay, so now we're going to make the actual pinwheel. So what you want to do, make sure you can see, is you're going to take one of the corners and you're going to, so hold down with your finger. So take the top, kind of looks like a little triangle. You're going to hold down one side of the triangle and you're going to fold the other one into the middle so it overlaps the middle. Now you're going to go to the corner triangle on your right hand side and you're going to do the same thing. So you're going to take the left corner, hold down the right corner with your finger and fold that left corner in on itself. You're going to take the bottom triangle. You're going to hold up now the right corner on the bottom side, hold down the left and ever so gently tug and pull it up so it meets in the middle. And now on the left triangle, you're going to pick up the bottom triangle corner, hold down the top triangle corner, and very gently lift and push. So it now becomes a pinwheel. So we're gonna do the same thing. So I'll do it one more time with you guys, and then you're on your own. So we're gonna take the top triangle. You're going to hold down the right hand side of that top triangle and fold in the left side. You're going to go to the right triangle. You're going to hold down the bottom corner of that triangle and fold in the top side. You're going to go to the bottom triangle. You're going to hold down the left side and then you're going to fold in the right corner of that. And then you're going to come to the left triangle you're going to hold the top corner and fold into the bottom corner. So it is every other one. So now you're gonna do this 14 more times. So now you have 16 beautiful pinwheels. Now this next part, I hate, I'm not gonna lie. So what we're gonna do is ever so carefully, we are gonna transfer these pinwheels onto our baking sheets. Um, I try to fit five for one and then six in the other. What you can do too is take a spatula to kind of help you. So the spatula holds one side, and you kind of come underneath it on the other. And then I'll show you how to lay it when I get a little bit more room. So again, if it has a lot of flour, go ahead and just brush off. But if there's a little bit of flour, it's not a big thing. And then you just wanna make sure that all the points are sticking out. And now we're gonna let these rest for 30 minutes on the counter. Okay, so it's been about 30 minutes. So what I'm gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and preheat your oven to 400 degrees. And I'm going to brush all of my pinwheels with the rest of the egg white wash. Okay, so we have gone ahead and glazed all of the pinwheels. And now you're gonna take that coarse sugar and you're gonna sprinkle it all over. So now they're ready to go in the oven. So I'm gonna bake one tray at a time, 400 degrees, for eight to 10 minutes. So I always go on the low end and then I check it and then I add either a minute or two pending how they look. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this in for eight minutes. Okay, so the pinwheels have been baking. I have my second batch in the oven. 
So this is what they look like when they come out of the oven. They should be a nice light golden brown. That sugar should be really sparkly and pretty. And they smell amazing. So you can eat them just like this. They're perfect, done, ready to go. And I have the rest of them going on my wire rack back there. If you want the optional glaze, what you're gonna do is you're going to take that powdered sugar and you're gonna pour your milk into that sugar and you're gonna whisk it. So all you have is just a nice sugar, sugar glaze. Now I like to put it in a Ziploc bag. I have it in my bag. And then I'm gonna cut a small corner on that bag. So it has a nice little opening. And then basically I'm gonna take my pinwheels and there's nothing fancy to this. You're literally just gonna drizzle the glaze all over the pinwheels. And you don't wanna overdo it. This isn't to mask the flavor of the pinwheel. It's literally just to enhance the pastry dough. So if you notice, not very much. So um, that is the pinwheels. So that is how you make an apricot Danish pinwheel. These things are my favorite things in the entire world. It, so I'm very excited to have this. Take a little sliver here. I hope you find the time to make these because they are definitely worth the time. Thanks guys for watching. See you next time.